You probably didn't read about it over the weekend, but it looks like the president's recent brinkmanship with Mexico actually worked. A week and a half ago, the president threatened to impose tariffs on all goods coming across our southern border until the Mexican government joins us to fight illegal immigration, migration they have been abetting for years. Well, on Friday, they got the message and caved. The Mexican government will now deploy 6,000 troops along its southern border with Guatemala. And going forward, certain asylum seekers will wait in Mexico rather than the U.S. until their cases are resolved. Now, none of that is going to solve our illegal immigration crisis, but it is, at least potentially, a big help. And you'd think every American would be happy about it. But no. Democratic presidential candidates spent the weekend complaining about the deal and taking Mexico's side. So, in case you're trying to follow the reasoning at home, by asking Mexico to stop encouraging an illegal invasion of our country, we're, quote, jeopardizing our relationship with Mexico, and it's our fault. Okay. But the dumbest and most extreme response came, as it always does, from Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey. Having a border at all, Booker explained, is very much like murdering people during the Holocaust. As much as he wants to make us afraid of, of, of people trying to come here escaping terror, not remembering, like, when we turned away other immigrants trying to escape terror, there was a, a ship that came here during World War II with a bunch of folks trying to escape the Holocaust, and we turned it around where they got killed in the Holocaust. We, with the shame of that, we, you think we would learn our lesson about people coming here to seek asylum, escaping terror. So how do you even respond to a statement like that? Maybe it's best to ignore it. But if you take three steps back, what do you conclude from rhetoric like this? Well, you probably assume the Democratic Party loves immigrants. But you'd be wrong. They don't. To the Democratic Party, immigrants are just a means to an end. And of course, the end is always the same, power. When immigrants to this country become pro-American and call for following our laws, as many do, by the way, the left turns on them too. But we start tonight breaking just minutes ago. Big news from the office of the Department of Justice of the United States. In a letter obtained now by Fox News, the assistant attorney general Stephen Boyd explains that John Durham's investigation into the origins of this Russia witch hunt is, quote, broad in scope and will cover, quote, activities of U.S. and foreign intelligence services, as well as non-governmental organizations and individuals. This is significant confirmation that our mission to investigate the investigators is not and has never been in vain. Facts, truth, justice, as we've been telling you, are about to cascade down on all of these deep state bad actors, those that abuse power. We'll have a lot more in the course of this hour and more in a moment. But while we focus on holding the government accountable on Capitol Hill, well, you've got Jerry Nadler's circus and clown show is in full gear. And today, the Democratic chairman of the House Judiciary Committee literally jumped the shark. Instead of passing laws or performing responsible oversight, Nadler instead, well, he invited the felon, the known perjurer liar, John Dean, to testify. That's right, the John Dean, the convicted felon, turned partisan hack, turned fake news CNN conspiracy theorist. He was the big star witness today. But you might remember, John Dean was once the White House counsel under Richard Nixon, where he was known as the master manipulator of the Watergate cover-up. He was accused of lying a whopping 19 times to federal prosecutors. I think he forgot that there were tapes and, of course, obstructing justice. John Dean is a convicted felon. He was disbarred many decades ago for, quote, being guilty of unethical, unprofessional and unwarranted conduct. Oh, disbarred, too. Perfect guy for fake news, CNN. Liar, fake news. Anyway, now the felon rakes in a lot of cash, trashing Donald Trump daily for the mainstream lying media mob. And because of a seedy track record and pension for lying, well, he fits right in there. So naturally, of course, Jerry Nadler was more than happy to give this known liar, convicted felon, yet another platform. Convicted felon, known liar, comparing a Republican president to Richard Nixon. By the way, this is how he now makes a living. It's nothing new for the disgraced CNN fake news mouthpiece. In fact, a few years ago, Dean wrote a book calling for the impeachment of, oh, George W. Bush. And that book was entitled Worse Than Watergate. This is like a lie he uses over and over again and gets paid for doing the same thing. Well, before Dean was getting paid by CNN to trash Donald Trump, 
Well, he was doing the exact same thing to former President Bush. He's a broken record. A Michigan Republican congressman is joining his Democratic colleagues in calling for President Trump's impeachment. Justin Amash is feeling the backlash tonight. Michigan Republican Congressman Justin Amash doubling down on his major attack on Twitter. The first lawmaker in the GOP to call for President Trump's impeachment. Amash wrote over the weekend and again today among his principal conclusions to his reading of the Mueller report, President Trump has engaged in impeachable conduct. The House Republican leader questioned why Amash even calls himself a Republican. This is exactly what he wants. He wants to have attention. He votes more with Nancy Pelosi than he ever votes with me. It's a question whether he's even in our Republican conference as a whole. A recent Fox poll suggests Amash is an outcast. 87% of Republicans are opposed to impeachment. President Trump dismissed Amash on Twitter, calling him, quote, a total lightweight who is just getting his name out there. 